Finding Dory. Dory was a baby blue tang fish. She lived with her parents, Jenny and Charlie. But Dory was not like other fish. She suffered from short-term memory loss. Dory's parents tried to help her with her memory, but nothing seemed to work. One day, her parents taught her how to play hide-and-seek. Her parents hid while Dory counted. But Dory quickly forgot about the game. When her parents came out of their hiding spots, Dory was sad that she had forgotten again. When she was little, Dory was separated from her parents. Alone, she wandered the ocean looking for them. As Dory swam, she asked the different sea creatures she met for help. As the years passed, Dory forgot all about her parents. She knew she was looking for something, but she couldn't remember what. Then one day, Dory saw a boat pass overhead. Nearby, she heard a panicked voice. They took my son, someone cried out. My son, help me, please. The voice was coming from a clownfish named Marlin. He was looking for a boat that had taken his son Nemo. Dory knew which way to go. Hey, I've seen a boat, she told him. Follow me. Together, Dory and Marlin traveled across the ocean and brought Nemo home. When they returned from their adventure, Marlin invited Dory to live with him and Nemo on the Great Barrier Reef. Dory was very happy in her new home. One day, she went with Nemo on a class field trip to see the stingray migration. The stingrays were going home. Dory swam after the stingrays, but she got too close to the edge of the reef. She was pulled into the undertow. As her whole world went black, she had a fuzzy memory of her parents. When Dory woke up, she had a strange feeling. I remembered something. I actually remembered something, Dory said excitedly. Something important. Marlin asked her what it was, but she couldn't remember. But Nemo had overheard Dory muttering about the jewel of Morro Bay, California. When he told Dory what she had said, it triggered another flashback. My family! I remember my family, Dory gasped. They're out there somewhere. Let's go. We have to go. Dory raced off, but Marlin pulled her back. No, Dory, he said. California's all the way across the ocean. How come every time we're on the edge of this reef, one of us is trying to leave? For once, can't we just enjoy the view? Dory looked at Marlin sadly. Please, she said. All I know is that I miss him. Do you know what that feels like? Marlin sighed. I know what that feels like, he said, remembering how much he had missed Nemo when he was gone. He and Nemo agreed to go to California with Dory. With the help of Marlin's sea turtle friend, Crush, the trio soon made it across the ocean. When they got to Morro Bay, Dory swam around shouting for her parents. A group of hermit crabs tried to shush her but they were too late. Dory had woken a giant squid. The squid chased the trio and grabbed Nemo, but the squid lost its grip and the friends were all flung into a nearby kelp forest. As Marlin comforted Nemo, he lashed out at Dory. Go wait over there and forget, he told her. It's what you do best. Upset, Dory went to find help. Suddenly, she heard a voice. Dory swam to the surface, calling out to Nemo and Marlin. Guys, I found help, she cried. Marlin and Nemo caught up with Dory just in time to see a pair of hands grab her and take her away in a boat. The humans dropped Dory into a fish tank and clipped an orange tag to her fin. Suddenly, an octopus popped out of the sink next to her. His name was Hank. He was actually a septopus an octopus with seven tentacles. Hank told Dory that she was in quarantine, where sick animals were treated before being released back into the ocean. Then, he explained what her tag meant. It's a transport tag for fish who can't cut it inside the institute, he said. They get transferred to permanent digs, an aquarium in Cleveland. Dory told Hank that she couldn't go to Cleveland. 
she had to get to the Jewel of Morro Bay, California, to find her family. Hank looked at her, confused. That's this place, he explained. The Marine Life Institute, the Jewel of Morro Bay, California. You're here. Dory looked around. I'm from here, she gasped. Hank asked her what exhibit she was from, but Dory couldn't remember. The octopus offered her a deal. If he helped Dory find her family, she would give him her tag so that Hank could go to Cleveland in her place. Dory agreed, and the pair took off. As Hank and Dory wandered the Institute, they met Bailey, a beluga whale who could use sound waves to see, and a whale shark named Destiny. Destiny knew Dory. You and I were friends, Destiny said. We talked through the pipes when we were little. You from your exhibit, me from here. We were pipe pals. Destiny told Dory that she was from the open ocean exhibit. She suggested that Dory swim through the pipes to get there. But Hank couldn't fit into the pipes, and Dory was worried she would get lost on her own. She was determined to find another way to the exhibit. Using a baby stroller for transport, Dory navigated while Hank rolled them toward the open ocean exhibit. But the two made a wrong turn. They ended up in the touch pool, a tank where children got to touch sea creatures. Hank was scared, but Dory encouraged him to just keep swimming. Finally, they escaped. Dory looked up. They had made it to the open ocean exhibit. Dory gave Hank her tag. You know, I think I'm going to remember you. Dory told her new friend. Hank shook his head. Ah, uh, you'll forget me in a heartbeat, kid, he said. I'll have a hard time forgetting you, though. Gently, Hank dropped Dory into the tank. Back in the open ocean exhibit, Dory spotted a trail of shells. She followed it and found her childhood home. Her parents weren't inside, but her memories came flooding back. She remembered going outside to look for a shell for her mom and being sucked into the undertow. It was my fault, Dory said sadly. My parents, I, I lost them. Just then, a crab interrupted Dory's thoughts. He told her that the blue tanks had been taken to quarantine. They would be shipped to Cleveland. Dory couldn't believe it. What? No, she cried. But I, I just... I just got here. The crab gave Dory directions back to quarantine. Without Hank around, she would have to go through the pipes. Stealing herself, Dory bravely swam forward. But try as she might, Dory couldn't remember the directions. In no time, she was lost. Then Dory remembered destiny. She called out in wail to her friend. Bailey and Destiny gave Dory directions to quarantine. Dory was almost there when she ran into Nemo and Marlin. They had found a way out of the gift shop aquarium and into the pipes. They had been looking for Dory. Marlin apologized to Dory. Then he headed back down the pipes. Follow me, he called to his friend. It's time to head home. But Dory wasn't ready to go. Wait, 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 she pleaded. Um, my parents are here. The trio continued through the pipes together toward quarantine, but Dory was nervous to meet her parents. Do you think my parents will want to see me? She asked. Because I lost them? Marlin smiled at Dory. Ever since I met you, he began, you've shown me how to do stuff I've never dreamed of doing. Dory, because of who you are, you are about to find your parents. And when you do that, you'll, you'll be home. When they reached quarantine, the tank of blue tanks had already been loaded on the truck to the aquarium. Suddenly, Hank appeared. Lifting Dory and her friends into a coffee pot, he helped them onto the truck. Inside, the blue tanks recognized Dory. They explained that her parents had gone to quarantine to find her years ago. They had never returned. Dory realized her parents were gone. I don't have a family she said sadly. No, Dory, Nemo said, shaking his head. That, that's not true. 
Dory swam backward into the coffee pot and was scooped up by Hank. Looking in the pot, Hank was surprised to see that Marlin and Nemo weren't there. Your orange friends are on their way to Cleveland, he told Dory. Suddenly, an institute worker grabbed Hank. Surprised, Hank dropped Dory. He watched horrified as the little blue tang spilled onto the floor and down a drain to the ocean. Dory shot out of the drain into the ocean. All alone, she began to panic. What do I do? She wondered. What would Dory do? As Dory swam, she spotted a trail of shells. She decided to follow it. In the distance, Dory saw two figures moving toward her. It was her parents! They were overjoyed to see Dory. They pulled Dory close, smiling through their tears. It's you! It's really you! Dory cried. Dory's parents explained that when they didn't find her in quarantine, they realized that she must have gone through the pipes to the ocean. They knew they had to do the same thing. They had been waiting in the same spot for years, hoping Dory would return. When her parents asked her if she had been alone all the time, Dory suddenly remembered her friends. Marlin and Nemo were still on the truck. Dory and her parents swam toward the Institute. Dory called out to Destiny to help them. Bailey and Destiny jumped out of their pools and into the ocean. The whale shark was thrilled to see Dory. But Dory didn't have any time to waste. Bailey had used his special sight to locate the truck. Dory asked some otters for help. Destiny flipped Dory toward the truck, and one of the otters caught her. On Dory's signal, all the otters began to hug. It was a cuddle party. Traffic stopped. The otter brought Dory to the back of the truck. Hank took Dory and placed her into Marlin and Nemo's tank. Nemo was excited to see Dory. Dory, you came back, he said. Dory smiled at him and Marlin. She couldn't leave her family. Suddenly, Hank knocked on their tank. The fish had to find a way to get back to the ocean before it was too late. As Marlin called for Becky, Hank put Marlin and Nemo into the bucket. Hank had just picked up Dory when Becky swooped in and grabbed the bucket. She didn't realize Dory was still on the truck. Dropping Marlin and Nemo into the ocean, she turned around to go back for Dory. Back on the truck, Dory tried to convince Hank to come with them. She didn't want him to go to Cleveland. Because the best things happen by chance, she told him. Because that's life, and that's you being with me out in the ocean. Not safe in some stupid glass box. Hank agreed. Just then, the truck door slammed shut, locking Dory and Hank inside. Hank was ready to give up, but Dory refused. There's gotta be a way. There's always a way, she said with determination. Looking up, the two spotted a vent in the ceiling. Hank was relieved. Holy carp, he cried out. There is another way. Together, the pair squeezed through the vent. Holding Dory, Hank stretched himself across the windshield. The two institute workers inside the truck jumped out. Hank took the driver's seat and set Dory in a cup. He steered while Dory navigated. Dory knew they had to get back to the ocean. Nervously, Dory looked at Hank. She was going to ask him to do something crazy. I'm okay with crazy, Hank said, smiling. Together, they drove the truck off the road and into the ocean. Dory, Hank, and the rest of the fish fell into the ocean where Dory's friends and family were waiting. They were free. A short time later, Dory found herself back on the Great Barrier Reef. Hank, Destiny, Bailey, and her parents had come to live with her, Marlin, and Nemo. One day, Marlin followed Dory to the drop-off. He was worried that she would forget where she was going and get lost. Dory stopped at the edge, looking out into the vast blue. Then she turned to Marlin. I was just enjoying the view, she said. Marlin settled next to Dory and turned around. Wow, it really is quite the view, he agreed. Dory looked behind her. Her combined family was gathered together, smiling at her. Dory had a feeling she'd remember this moment forever. Music